Megalosaurus, or the Great Lizard, was one of the biggest predators of its time. But for us humans, it was more than that. It was one of the first dinosaurs we ever found, and the first ever to be named. You can guess how confused people from the 1600s were when fossils of this giant, scary-looking creature were unearthed. In fact, when it was first discovered, people thought it was a giant from the Bible or a Roman war elephant. It took humans 200 years to finally label it as a dinosaur, but we'll get into that story later. First, let's talk about Megalosaurus's scary appearance. In 2010, a paleontologist reconstructed the Megalosaurus using all the known body parts, giving us a rough idea of what this magnificent creature looked like. The reconstruction shows it as a carnivorous theropod, medium to large in size, measuring up to 6 meters or 20 feet in length. That's almost as massive as a fire truck. It weighed around 1 ton, similar to a European bison. Now, it's not as big as famous theropods like T. rex or Spinosaurus, but it still ranks among the largest theropods of the Middle Jurassic period. Studies on Megalosaurus bones showed us they were strong and bulky, meaning it had lots of muscles. Its skull was really tough, especially considering it was bigger than expected for its body. This suggests its mouth was also super strong with sharp teeth that could easily tear into flesh. And even though its arms were short, they were strong and likely had three fingers, which were used for grabbing prey or cutting quickly. Apart from that, with its long, narrow skull housing sharp, blade-like teeth, you can imagine how well-equipped Megalosaurus was for slicing through the flesh of its victims. But just how powerful was its bite force? You'll be surprised to know that despite having a flattened skull, Megalosaurus's bite was pretty strong. In fact, it was stronger than that of Allosaurus, thanks to its thick neck, which allowed it to deliver extremely powerful bites. But there is a bit of a mystery here, and that's the skull of Megalosaurus. The parts that have been found are usually bigger compared to the rest of its body. So, we can't be sure if that means Megalosaurus had an unusually large head or if it's just a coincidence. But we do know that the maxilla, which is the bone of the upper jaw, had about 13 big teeth, each up to 7 centimeters long. These teeth have sharp edges, with 18 to 20 tiny notches per centimeter. The jugal bone near the eye is hollowed out, possibly by an air sac from the nasal bone, which is unusual for Megalosaurus. Looking at the lower jaw, it's quite strong and not too wide at the tip. Some features thought to be unique to Megalosaurus turned out to be damaged, but there are still some special traits, like a groove on the outer side shared with Torvosaurus. Finally, the number of teeth in the lower jaw is uncertain, but it probably had around 13 or 14. Now, with a gigantic appearance and a mouth full of scary teeth, the only question is, how did this dinosaur live? Well, it's thought that Megalosaurus, given its size and teeth, was the top predator in its environment. It was fully capable of taking down large herbivores like Stegosaurus, and possibly even sauropods. Its robust build likely helped it overcome these formidable prey. As for how it hunted, it's challenging to say, due to limited fossil evidence. However, as we mentioned earlier, studies on its jaws suggest it had a powerful bite, with large, sharp teeth perfect for inflicting serious wounds. Its sense of smell likely played a significant role in targeting prey, and during attacks, its sharp claws would have been used to pin down and slash its victims, preventing escape. Fossil findings of multiple Megalosaurus individuals together have even led to the idea that these guys displayed communal behavior and carried out pack hunting. In any case, one thing is for sure. Megalosaurus was likely the dominant predator in its ecosystem, with only another Megalosaurus or rare accidents posing a threat. What could these be? The answers lie in the place where it lived. 166 million years ago, England was vastly different from what it is today. It was lush and tropical, and the Megalosaurus lived in an area filled with ferns and ginkgos. It was often near water, and some of these dinosaurs even lived on islands, its habitat was teeming with diverse and abundant life. Other dinosaurs that lived alongside the Megalosaurus included sauropods like Cardiodon and Cetiosaurus, as well as Stegosaurus. 
Megalosaurus likely preyed on both sauropods and stegosaurs, using its efficient weaponry. But hunting wasn't always easy, as shown by fractured bones, probably caused by fights with herbivores. Other theropods also coexisted, such as Lyosuchus and Streptospondylus, with the latter two being similar in size to Megalosaurus. They likely had their own separate niches and didn't prey on each other. Megalosaurus was more common and widely distributed, which definitely gave it a leg up. But dinosaurs weren't the only ones thriving in England during this time. Fish, pterosaurs, insects, and cynodonts were also present. It's possible that Megalosaurus may have hunted these non-dinosaur animals. Next, let's talk about its family tree and see where it comes from. It belonged to the family Megalosauridae, named after Megalosaurus. This family comprised nine members, all quite primitive compared to later theropods, characterized by lower and longer skulls. They were widespread across the Earth, but as mentioned before, Megalosaurus itself was found only in present-day England. While other proposed species of Megalosaurus have been discovered outside of England, none can be confidently identified as Megalosaurus. And now, let's talk about how this dinosaur was first discovered. Paleontologists have known about it for centuries, ever since the 1600s, when they found its fossil in the UK. But it wasn't until the early 1800s that a paleontologist named William Buckland figured out what this giant creature actually was. He realized it was a gigantic lizard-like creature, estimating it to be around 40 feet long and 8 feet tall. In 1824, Buckland officially gave the Megalosaurus its name and described it. Even though his understanding was better than before, he still made mistakes, which showed in his drawings and descriptions of the beast. Buckland thought the Megalosaurus was like a lizard, walking on four legs, and could move on both land and in water. He also thought it was even bigger than he first estimated, about 33 times larger. Other than that, Buckland also noticed that the Megalosaurus was a meat eater because of its sharp teeth. Being religious, he believed the Megalosaurus played a role mentioned in the Bible, where it would end the lives of old and sick animals, thus reducing animal suffering as he saw it. This understanding of the obviously Megalosaurus didn't last long. As more fossils were found, paleontologists realized it probably walked on two legs and wasn't as big as they originally thought. By the end of the 1800s, they had a better idea. Then, throughout the 1900s and early 2000s, even more fossils were discovered, like a location that had 103 bones alone. With these finds and improved knowledge about dinosaurs in general, we now understand the Megalosaurus much better than when it was first described. For example, we know it's got only one species, Megalosaurus bucklandi. Even though other species have been suggested, none have been widely accepted due to a lack of fossil evidence. Megalosaurus Backlandi itself suffers from this problem too. Despite finding many specimens, there's still a lot missing, especially vertebrae and skull bones. This means we're not completely sure what it looked like, but you'll often see it appearing in pop culture anyway. And to jog your memory a bit, here are a few examples. In Charles Dickens' novel Bleak House from the 1850s, the author painted a playful picture of a huge Megalosaurus wandering through the streets of London in the very first paragraph. During the Victorian era, sculptor Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins created large statues of prehistoric animals, including Megalosaurus, for the Crystal Palace Gardens in 1854. These statues, although outdated in their portrayal of the dinosaurs as bulky and slow, remain important historic structures that can still be visited today. More recently, Megalosaurus has appeared on limited edition Royal Mail stamps in 2013 and was featured on special 50 pence coins produced in collaboration with the Royal Mint and dinosaur artist Bob Nichols in 2020. These modern representations continue to keep the fascination with Megalosaurus alive. But what wiped this amazing dinosaur off the planet? Megalosaurus lived during a period called the Bathonian Age, which was about 168 to 165 million years ago, right in the middle of the Jurassic period. We haven't found any Megalosaurus fossils from any other time period, so it might have disappeared by the end of the Bathonian. In the past, artists often showed Megalosaurus and Iguanodon together in illustrations, because they were some of the first dinosaurs discovered. However, they actually lived at different times, 
Megalosaurus would have been gone by the time Iguanodon showed up in the early Cretaceous period. Scientists aren't entirely certain what led to Megalosaurus' extinction, but many believe climate change may have played a significant role. Changes in sea levels and shifts in climate patterns could have made survival challenging for predators like Megalosaurus. Additionally, the arrival of new predators like Allosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus may have increased competition for resources, putting additional pressure on Megalosaurus and possibly contributing to its extinction. While Megalosaurus itself went extinct, its relatives lived on into the late Jurassic and possibly the early Cretaceous. However, around this time, the group likely met its end too. As for Megalosaurus, although the species is lost to history, its legacy remains remarkable. The discovery of this great dinosaur fossil and its classification paved the way for an inspiring field of science, leading to the discovery of numerous other ancient animals. Who could have imagined that 200 years of discovery could unveil a world that would forever change our lives, knowledge, and understanding of the world? To sum it up, Megalosaurus is an extraordinary dinosaur that has left an indelible mark on paleontology. With its impressive size, intimidating appearance, and predatory instincts, Megalosaurus was among the top predators of its era. And that's a wrap. Given its looks, do you think this dinosaur would better fit into the role of a protector or a villain in a movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.